Safeco predominantly is known for its fire extinguishers and hose reels, mostly the equipment we supply into the portable industry, fire industry. Our roots has since been in the country since 1986, but in Safeco in its current environment essentially was established in 2008. We've actually got a, a bit of a history within agriculture. We, Safeco was part of a bigger group called Rovic International, and so one of the sister companies actually Rovic Lears, and which is well known within the agricultural space. One of the other businesses, Burke with Turfag, and we're the odd one out dealing with fire. So we've been, been at Nampo since 2014, so this will be year 10 that, that we've been at the, at the show. And we've mostly been coming here to explain agricultural fires, um, discussing typically the skid units, or bakisakis as some people call it, and in the fire, you know, the engine driven fire pumps is what we typically discuss at, at these expos. Within our industry, so there's typically everyone's having a big discussion point about the challenges we face with the lithium iron battery fires. That is, that's currently a hot topic because everyone's converting to green power solar installations, so there's batteries in everyone's house. The same on vehicles, so you see a lot of vehicles moving over. And there's certain challenges within, within internationally on, on that front because the technology that got adapted internationally all over is actually not the standard mediums as we know can't actually put out any of those fires. And so it's very dynamic at the moment where the world is trying to adapt to this you know, challenge that we potentially face. And South Africa is no different. Um, we've seen a lot more of this internationally but so there's a few discussion points on that front at the show but still most of the farmers are still very much interested about the skid units why this why that and I think so we spend a lot of time there's a few misconceptions in the industry so we sell a lot of medium to to high pressure pumps and skid units and there's always debate between is a high pressure pump better than a medium pressure and it's very much, you know, in the farming space, the northern section in the country is more high pressure based. The southern part is, is more medium pressure. And so you always have this debate where the pump can deliver 650 liters a minute. And people say, oh, but if my tank's only 600 liters, I'm going to discharge all the water within a minute. And then what? But people forget that you have a nozzle at the end of the pipe and you can actually adjust it so you can get it down to 19 liters but if it's a big fire you need to really discharge a volume of water you can set it to 150 liters which is completely different to what a high pressure pump delivers the other thing of course with the davy products we we display here today it is known for its reliability so it's definitely by far the premier brand in firefighting equipment and so it's always having those discussions and it's nice seeing the farmers coming back and saying, oh, I like the pump, it's still running, what's new? And so we always, a different nozzle or a lay flat and, and, and an on-sell because the products last, they, they don't break. The big challenge on the, the lithium iron side of things has been that the normal mediums we know is powder CO2 doesn't work. And so the risk with the battery specifically is when it overheats, it can go into thermal runaway and then it's essentially one cell ignites the other cell and so the product we typically look after that we promote in South Africa is called an AVD Lithex product and what's unique about that medium it is a vermiculite product so vermiculite is a natural product consisting of aluminium, iron, manganese and um, silica and it's actually used in fertilizer we suspend that in water and so the product is 17% vermiculite, 83% water. And what that product does is actually the water cools the battery, which is very important. Then it, once the water evaporates, it encapsulates the cell. And once it encapsulates, it actually prevents propagation. It prevents the fire, the yeast, from spreading to another cell. And that ultimately prevents it from reignition. The challenge with lithium is it looks like it, you've killed the fire, but in time, it actually starts burning again. There's many stories internationally of Tesla cars or other cars and batteries that they killed and a few hours later, even days later,
the fires reignite. And so that's the challenge that internationally everyone's trying to do. And I think with our product, which is quite unique, it cools, it encapsulates, it stops that propagation and it stops the reignition. I think the other thing about lithium fires that's important, in traditional sense, you always try and kill a fire. But with the lithium iron challenge that we face, it's not so much about killing the fire as it is to prevent propagation. You don't want that battery fire lighting up anything else. And so the approach is slightly different. So even with a Merculite, we term it as a fire break. So if I apply it to a surface, I can't burn that surface. So sometimes if a battery burns, you just want to cover it up. So we've got special blankets that can take temperature of up to 1500 degrees Celsius. And that, you'd leave it. You let it burn, but at least the flames are contained. So it's a slightly mind change and people find it very difficult. The discussions we have is like, can it kill the fire? And you say, yes, it can. But sometimes it's not about killing the fire. It's a question of covering it up or preventing other surfaces from burning around it. But we still have a long way to go in South Africa and internationally on this front. So on a weekly, monthly basis, new procedures are written, new standards are set. It's a very dynamic environment at the moment.